that they just couldn't stand it. And Stephen said, well, God dwells not in temples made with hands. And I thought about how big God is. You know, his height. Man was made a little lower than the angels. The angels were a little lower than Jesus. Jesus, his physical form is similar to the Father's form. But if you would look and imagine in our minds the God the Father surrounded with all that glory, his height, his circumference, his density, his mass, his weight. You know, there's not a temple on earth that can house God. Yes, Lord. He's so awesome. Yes, he is. If he would stand right here, though his sheer weight, this temple, this temple couldn't hold God. God is awesome. He's a consuming fire. Yes, he is. Yes, yes, you know, the volcanic eruption in New Zealand. These folk were on this one of the islands in New Zealand, and the, the volcano suddenly erupted. Mm. And hot lava just went way up in the sky, and it rained down fire and brimstone on folk. And a lot of people didn't make it. They were burned by that hot lava in the center of the earth. See, the earth is like a, it's a crust, an outer core, but the innermost core of the earth is, is molten lava. Very, very hot. And see, God is a consuming fire. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. And when that hot ash fell upon those folk on that island, many of them did not survive. I mean, the, the, can you imagine being burnt with hot, molten metal, thousands of degrees in temperature? And I thought about that. I heard that, that on the news, and I said, hell is going to be a horrible thing. You know, we, we don't want to serve God because of fear of God as far as being afraid of God, but you know, you don't want to go to hell. See, the third angel's message is a warning against those who worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in their forehead or in their hand. The same are going to drink of the wine of the wrath of God which is poured out without mixture into his cup of indignation. You see, before God destroys the earth with, uh, with his, the brightness of his coming, he's going to punish the earth with a series of judgments. Seven trumpets and seven last plagues. God's going to punish this world. And when he comes, everybody that's left, they're going to be destroyed by the brightness of his coming. And see, the third angel's message is a warning against those who participate in this new world order and compromise and get the mark in their forehead or in their hand. They're going to drink of the wine of the wrath of God. So we have a very unique message at Seventh-day Adventist. Amen. And I'm thankful for this message. message. Yes, it's unique. Nobody else is preaching the message that we have. And uh, praise the Lord. We want to live up. We want to understand the message, accept it, and be a part of the mighty movement which will war against the forces of darkness. In the book of Daniel, chapter 12, We'll get into our scripture 
And the title of this sermon is In the Time of the End, Many. In the Time of the End, Many. That's our sermon title. In the time of the end, many. Let us pray. Dear Lord, as we open your word, we pray for understanding. We pray that we would understand that we are living in the time of the end. Help us to understand the times in which we live and help us to be on the side of right. Here our prayer we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now the servant of God tells us that when we as a people understand the books of Daniel and Revelation as we should, there will be seen among us a great revival. And see, the end result of that revival is that God is going to pour out his spirit upon us without measure. The power of God is going to be manifested in this church similar to that which happened on the day of Pentecost. God is going to restore unto the church the gifts of the Spirit, the power of God. You see, when Jesus ascended to heaven, he told his disciples, he said, all power is given unto me in heaven and on earth. Go ye therefore and preach. Take the gospel to the whole world because I will empower you. I'm going to give you power. I'm going to give you grace. I'm going to give you the unction of the Holy Spirit so that you could participate, so that you could, I'm going to use you to finish the work. But you're going to have to have this power. All power has, has been given unto me, and I'm going to give it to you. And the disciples had power, brothers and sisters, even before the day of Pentecost. He gave them power over all devils and power over all diseases. Amen. And that those gifts of the Spirit intensified. When they got themselves together as a church in the upper room, they cleared the way so that God could pour out his spirit upon them without measure. And the enemy of God and man is determined that we will never be in a position to receive that sort of power. But God is going to raise up people and is raising up people to prepare a church for the reception of the full power of the Holy Spirit. We are living now in the time of the dispensation of the Holy Spirit. God wants the Holy Spirit to come and fill every church member. The servant of God says, if all were willing, all would be filled. God wants to fill you and I with his fullness, with his power, with his presence, with the Holy Ghost. Our bodies are temples for the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. That's why we have to watch what we eat, watch what we see, watch how we hear. If we would not fall prey to Satan's device, we must guard well the avenues to the soul. We should avoid reading, hearing, or seeing anything that suggests impure thoughts. God wants our minds stayed on him so that he can seal us. And when that seal comes upon our foreheads, brothers and sisters, it's a permanent marker. When that seal is on us, we will be, we are saved. And we're not going to turn around. So let's turn to Daniel chapter 12. Verse 10, verse 9 and 10. Here, God, the angel, tells Daniel. Because Daniel didn't understand what was going on. 
We see the Lord revealed to Daniel all these things, all these events, and Daniel couldn't understand. Light was coming at such a rapid pace that Daniel didn't understand, and Daniel wanted an explanation. I'm going to start with verse 1 in Daniel 12 so we can get the gist of what 9 and 10 says. Daniel 12, 1 says, And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. The time is coming, brothers and sisters, when the Holy Spirit will be totally withdrawn from the earth. See, right now the spirit is being withdrawn gradually and things are getting worse and worse. Paul says, evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. You heard on the news how these two people ran into this Jewish synagogue in New York with guns drawn and they tried to kill everybody they could. Mass shootings. And I heard another story about a young girl, 18 years old, on a walk in New York. She was walking through a park not too far from her college school. She went to an all-girls school, 18 years old. And some, allegedly some 13-year-old and maybe a few other kids stabbed her. And uh, she died after she walked up those steps. What a horrible crime. Minding her own business, young lady in the prime of life, 18 years old, demon-possessed boys, took her life. We're living in the time of the end, the time of trouble. Praise the Lord, we have angels around us. God has been given, he has given all of his people guardian angels, and they protect us from those sorts of things. Sometimes our time is up. But Daniel says, and at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble, such as there never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. See, when your name is retained in the book of life, you're going to be sealed, you're going to be protected, and see, Psalm 91 is going to take into effect. He shall give his angels charge over thee. God will have a people that we, he will protect during the time of trouble. A thousand shall fall at thy side, ten thousand at thy right hand. Yes. But it shall not come nigh thee, only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. God is going to have a people that he's going to protect, that he's going to cover, that he's going to deliver Amen. through the time of trouble. The time of trouble is going to be horrible, but it is not so horrible that God can't deliver, that God can't protect, that God can't shield his people. Yeah. Remember when they threw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace? God worked a miracle and took the heat out of the fire and the power out of the flame, and those men were preserved by Jesus Christ. That same miraculous power will protect his true people who stand for right. Yes. Though the heavens fall, we've got to get into the habit, brothers and sisters, of doing right and standing up for right. We should not be ashamed of the gospel. Those three young men, Sherak, Meshach, and Abednego, said we will not bow down. Even though everybody else was bowing down, they said we are going to stand. And they stood. And they had to suffer the consequences. But God delivered them. All right, verse 2. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. 
and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Now these wise people in Daniel 12, 3, they're talking about teachers. They that be wise in the Hebrew, they that be teachers shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. See, we must teach the word of God. Preach and teach the word. That's wise. Showing wisdom. And those that be wise, those that teach, those that witness, those that share their faith are going to shine. And the word of God never returns unto God void. With, when the word goes out, it has the power to turn people from sin to righteousness. Verse 4 says, But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book to the time of the end. No more information now. Shut up the words, seal the book to the time of the end. And the time of the end began in uh, 1798. That was the beginning of the time of the end. And the, the, these words, these prophecies were to be sealed until the end of time. And it was 1798 and afterwards people began to study the prophecies of Daniel and Revelation and the ancient movement began to go on the rise. Many ran to and fro, knowledge was increased, there was a great revival of the early 1800, mid 1800 century, 1800 century. Verse five says, then I, Daniel, looked and behold, there stood other two, one on this side of the bank of the river and the other on the other side of the bank of the river. And one said unto the man clothed with linen, which was upon the waters of the river, how long shall it be to the end of these wonders? So Daniel wanted to know, when is all this going to end? You see, and I heard, but understood not. And I heard the man clothed with linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand to heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever and ever, that it shall be for a time, times, and a half a time. When he shall have power to scatter but he shall have to accomplish to scatter the power of the holy people. These things shall be finished. And we know that time, times, and times and a half, a time is 360 years, times uh, 720 years, and a half a time is 180 days, and that comes to 1260 years. And Daniel says, verse 8, And I heard, but understood not. Then said he, O oh my Lord, when shall be the end of these things? When is it all going to end? Daniel wanted to understand. Take me to the end. Take me to the final chapter. I want to know when it's going to happen. When time will be no more. And Christ will reign supreme on this planet. And the answer was in verse 9, he said unto, and he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. See, in the time of the end, something's going to happen. There's going to be a, the rise of the 144,000, the rise of the remnant church, which will produce the 144,000. And God is going to use 144,000 purified saints to finish this work. Verse 10 says, many, see the title of this message is, in the time of the end, many. Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Many. Now, there's going to be two groups of people in this word, many. The first group, many shall be purified, made white, and tried. That's that first group. And see, God is working a work in our day, in our church. He's going to have a purified people. 
Many are going to be purified. They're going to be made white. Their characters are going to be so refined. All the dross, all the impurities will be erased through the fire of trial and temptation. Why are you going through all these trials? You're in the purifying process. See, before silver and gold can be used, it has to be purified. It, it comes out of the rock. It's precious, but it has all this dirt and debris around it. They have to purify it. The only way they can purify silver or gold, they have to heat it up. When they heat it up, it begins to melt, and all the impurities are separated from the pure. The pure and the vile are separated. And at the end result, they have pure gold. They have pure silver. That's why you're going through all the trials you're going through. That's why you're being shaken here and there. Everything that can be shaken will be. See, the shaking time goes on, and everybody is shaken. But see, some folk are shaking in. Some are shaking out. The wise, they're shaking in. They're getting stronger and stronger and stronger. More determined, I'm going to serve the Lord anyhow. Amen. Though he slay me, yet shall I trust him. Amen. The wise are holding on. You see, Jacob's name was changed because Jacob said, I'm going to hold on. Jesus said, let me go. Jacob said, no. The true people of God are going to hold on till they are changed. I will not let you go until you bless me. The true people of God endure unto the end. They hold on till God blesses them. He's going to bless you with victory. He's going to bless you with righteousness. He's going to bless you with power. He's going to give you the Holy Ghost. He's going to give you wisdom. He's going to give you grace. He's going to share with you his glory, and eventually you're going to be elevated to the very throne of heaven. Did not Christ say to the Laodiceans, if you overcome as I overcame, you will sit with me in my throne as I overcame and sat down with my father on his throne? You're going to be elevated to the very throne of heaven. Heaven, the throne of the universe. You're going to share the throne with Jesus. But you got to be purified down here. Many will be purified, made white. See, we're being settled in. You see, some are being shaken out. Some are being shaken in. They're being settled in. And they get to the point in their experience where nothing's going to shake them from God. You see, when you really know the Lord, Jesus said, my father is greater than I. He said, the devil can't take you out of my hand. The devil can't take you out of my father's hand. The father and the son, they have omnipotent hands. And when you give yourself to Jesus, they put their hands around you. You are in his hands, and nothing can pluck you out of the Father's hand. No devil is strong enough to uncurl the hand of God around you. No man is able to pluck you out of my Father's hand. Jesus even places a woe upon the people that harm children. You see, if you offend one of these little ones that believe in Jesus, one of these new believers, it were better for you that a millstone were hanged about at your neck and you were cast into the sea. God does not take lightly people who mistreat you. So don't think God doesn't love you because he does. Pray for those folks that despitefully use you and persecute you and scandalize your name. Pray for them because if they don't repent, they're going to be lost. Amen. Amen. 
But you've got to look beyond human beings. Look to Jesus. God will never put upon you more than what you can bear. With every temptation, there is a way of escape. And you can get to the point in your experience where every trial brings you closer to God and you reflect more and more and more of God's image. Yes, yes, That's what trials are for. Trials tell us who we are. Amen. You see? And see, we all need help. We all need change. Yes. Yes, but God will hold your hand. Many shall be purified, made white, and tried. Oh, yes, the greater trials are coming. The time is coming when we will not be able to buy or sell at any price. At that point, the saints are going to be sealed. They're going to be protected. They're going to be kept by the power of God. But we've got to get to that point. Now verse, again, the middle part of verse 10. But the wicked shall do wickedly. So the wicked are going to continue in sin. And because of sin, it's going to obscure their vision. So they're not going to be able to understand. None of the wicked shall understand. They're not going to understand what's happening. They're going to misinterpret God's providences and they're going to abandon their position and join the ranks of opposition. The wicked are not going to understand, but the wise are going to understand. Amen. So what side are you going to be on of the many? Go your way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Many are going to be purified and many are going to remain wicked. Which side are you going to be on? You see, this, these remnant people, this last generation, they are going to be recipients of the wrath of Satan. Revelation 12 says, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knows he had for the short time. So the devil's wrath is going to burn hot against this whole world. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. This is a worldwide warning that the devil has come down having great wrath, because he knows his time is short. And see, the saints are going to re be recipients of the war. The dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God. These folk are loyal in the face of disloyalty. The dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the faith and have the testimony of Jesus. So let us make sure we are on the many that will stand for right. Because we're going to have to do duty, we're going to have to do battle against the beast, its image, its mark, its number, and its name. We're going to have to be victorious we must overcome the world, the flesh, and the devil to qualify for the seal of God. Yeah. Now, there's some things about Daniel that we need to take into consideration because Daniel is to stand his lot in the last days. Daniel had a special diet. Along with his three companions, he ate right, he accepted health reform. Health reform is part of the third angel's message. Daniel had a prayer life. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. A consistent prayer life. And he prayed, and when he had some problems, he fasted too. He fasted and prayed. You want power in your life? Have a consistent prayer life. Daniel prayed three times a day, morning, noon, and evening, and he fasted when he needed to. 
And when the angel came down, he said, you are a man greatly beloved. You want God to answer your prayers? Pray. Be consistent in your prayer life and your devotion. Angels will come down and answer your prayers. Angels will take care of your friends. Angels will take care of your enemies. I had enemies I had to pray for. I said, Lord, deal with this one. He's trying to get me fired. Make him get fired. He said, he will, he will, God will stand for you. You stand for him, God's going to stand for you. He's going to be an enemy to your enemies. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. God gave that promise to Abraham. He's going to bless those that bless him and curse those who curse him. That promise is for you and me. Serve the Lord. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Stay on the path. Stay in the ship. God's going to bring you through. Don't worry about the enemies. Don't worry about the tears. God's going to deal with them. Daniel had a special diet. Daniel had a prayer life. He prayed and fasted. Daniel had faith. Daniel was devoted to God. Daniel had wisdom. We need wisdom today. Special wisdom in these last days. Solomon prayed for wisdom. Lord, give me an understanding heart. He didn't pray for riches and glory of man. He prayed for divine wisdom. And that is what we should pray for. The Bible says in the book of James, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. God will give to all men liberally, and I'm afraid if not, it shall be given to him. But let him ask in faith. Ask for wisdom. God will give you special wisdom that the world will marvel. Remember those two women, these two harlots were sleeping and sleeping in the same house? They had two, they had babies and one slept and the baby was killed. The mother had smothered the baby to death, but the mother got up and she exchanged babies while the other lady was asleep. So they had a problem, you see. See, we got to have wisdom to deal with the church problems. See, the church has a lot of problems, you see. And the Lord has just showed me about wisdom. How I'm going to have to have divine wisdom to deal with the problems in this church. Divine wisdom. But God is going to pour out his spirit, and we're going to deal with the problems, with the issues in the church. Amen. Amen. Here we have these two women. One said, this is my baby. The other said, no, this is my baby. You have the dead baby. No, you have my baby. Somebody was lying. Now, how was Samson or Solomon, how was he going to deal with this? Yeah. One is saying, this is my baby. One is saying, no, that's my baby. How was Solomon with the wisdom of God? The Lord just showed me, I got to have the wisdom, you see. <laughs> Solomon had wisdom. He said, well, take the sword, the executioner, and slay Boom! Slay the line, baby, so you can give one half to the other lady and the other half to the other. Hey, there's something about a mother's love. We're talking about first love this morning, the early morning prayer service. Something about a mother's love. And when that executioner was about ready to slay that baby, the mother said, no, no, don't slay her. Let, let, let her have her. Then God knows how to test you. Hey, God is a God of wisdom. He can test you. And Solomon in his discernment said, that's the mother. Don't slay her. It's going to take the wisdom of Solomon to deal with the problems in these churches. God's going to deal with them. You see. So, in closing, there's some things we need to understand and have to equip us to deal with these last, this last generation. Number one, and we dealt with it, we need wisdom. If you want wisdom, ask God for wisdom. Number two, we're going to need understanding. Say, God will give you understanding, which is key discernment. 
You have to know right from wrong. You can't be deceived. I was listening to a preacher on the way here last night, and this preacher sounded real good. He was preaching, and he did all these statistics, and he was just preaching and preaching. And I thought for a moment, this man is on fire for God. But as I kept listening, I realized that he's being motivated by an unclean spirit. Mm -hmm. You see, the Bible says in the book of Revelation, I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of a dragon, out of the mouth of a beast, out of the mouth of a false prophet. There are a lot of people professing to be prophets of God, but they're false prophets. You can tell by the content of their message. You see, God has given us a unique message. And if these prophets are preaching According to the world, they're going to try to mingle the church craft and the world craft. They're trying to mingle, get into politics. God has told us, don't get involved like that. There should be separation of church and state. God has given us a unique message. Number C or number three of what we need in these last days, we need compassion. Yes, Lord. Compassion. Yes, Lord. Pray for compassion. Compassion. Yeah. Tears don't have compassion. God wants you and I to have compassion. Number four, he wants us to have righteous. righteousness. Righteousness. Mm -hmm. And see, righteousness is a series of self-sacrificing acts. That's what righteousness is. A series of self-sacrificing acts. My first definition of righteousness. Second definition, righteousness is burden bearing. Jesus said if you want to be my disciple, you've got to take up the cross. So righteousness is bearing your burden, taking up your cross. God has given you a work to do. Third definition for righteousness is love in action. Love in action. You see, if you see your brother in need and won't help him, you know, how do you love your brother? See, so love is an action word. Righteousness is an action word. Love in action. And number four definition, love is doing good or, or righteousness is doing good. Jesus went about doing good, healing those who were oppressed by the devil. Righteousness is being good. Number five, being good. Number six, righteousness is speaking good. Speaking good. You don't gossip and backbite and slander Amen. and speak evil of others. Righteousness is speaking good. Righteousness is abiding in Christ. And Christ abides in you. You see, Jesus said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you're going to ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. A righteous person is going to have their prayers answered because they abide in Christ and Christ abides in them. Yes. Yeah. See, we are either reflecting Christ and gathering or we are repelling Christ and we're scattering. There are folk in the church that are scattering the flock of God by not being kind and loving, tender-hearted and pitiful and courteous. They're driving people from Jesus. Mm, have mercy, Lord. And they're going to be held accountable. Righteousness is the straight testimony. And it's going to be painful, but we're going to have to deal with the, some problems. That we're going to have to give the straight testimony. Some people aren't right. We've got to call sin by their right name, by its right name. Some folk are not converted, yet they hold positions in the church. Amen. We're going to have to deal with those folk. Ninth definition of righteousness is being faithful unto death, and my time is up. 
But in Revelation 2, verse 9 and 10, Christ tells his church, Be thou faithful unto death, and I'm going to give you a crown of life. So righteousness is being faithful. And last but not least, righteousness is being crowned. You see, God has, is going to give the Philadelphia church. They're going to have their crown while on this planet. He says, take, don't let nobody take your crown. God's going to give them the seal of God, the crown. They're going to have the name of God, the name of the city of my God. And they're going to have Jesus' new name. While living on the earth, we're going to see people, brothers and sisters, that are filled with the Holy Spirit. Like Enoch and Elijah, their faces are going to shine. And I want to make sure, you all should make sure, hey, I'm going to be amongst that group that's going to be sealed with the seal of God. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we're thankful that the angels are holding back the winds of strife. Yes. They're holding them back until your servants are sealed. Help us to be amongst the number that will receive the seal of the living God. <clears throat> Judah, Joseph, Reuben, Gad, Naphtali, Benjamin, Joseph, Zebulun, Issachar, Levi, they were all sealed. 12,000 from each tribe. Help us to be amongst the sealed ones. Hear our prayer, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.